Well, national speaker and author Alex McFarlane recognizes that everyday Christians of all ages are dealing with many of the things described in those verses. He is the author of several books on Christian apologetics, including 10 Issues That Divide Christians and the 21 Toughest Questions Your Kids Will Have About God and Christianity. Zach is with Alex, who joins us here in the TV44 studios. Well, thank you, Mark. You may have also heard him on Explore the Word on your radio. He is the director of the Center for Christian Worldview and Apologetics at North Greenville University. And we are thrilled to have Alex McFarlane with us. Alex, thank you so much for being on with us. Well, thank you, Zach. It's an honor to be here. Glad to have you. One thing that we left off your resume that we just learned the other night, quite the bass player, I understand, joining the Christian band, well, or the church band there. I love music. And <laughs> it was an honor to sit in for one night. Well, we've uh, certainly enjoyed the different topics that you've covered, and we're going to briefly go over those um, here shortly. But first, um, apologetics in general, uh, yeah. something that maybe as Christians we hear addressed or maybe hear the word quite a bit, maybe don't fully grasp um, the importance of it or really the definition. So let's go over that. Apologetics, what is the mission of apologetics and why is it important in our Christian world today? Great question. Apologetics means to defend the faith, really to explain why we believe what we believe. And it's a biblical word, you know, it's found in the New Testament in about half a dozen places. Uh, probably the most well-known verse is 1 Peter 3.15, which says, be ready always to give an answer to everyone who asks a reason <laughs> for the hope that you have. So when we explain you know, why God is real or how do we know the Bible is true or how do we know Jesus really is authentic, that's apologetics. Um, let me explain what it's not. It's not apologizing. <laughs> it, you know, it's not saying, oh, I'm sorry for being a Christian. You know, mm -hmm. please, please like me anyway. <laughs> no, it's not apologizing, but it means to speak in defense of. Okay, and yeah. so that's something that we hear and maybe aren't sure how to go about doing. And so yeah. what are some, um, we, we of course will go over the topics, but some of the basis is, basics to apologetics that kind of equip us to do that. Great question. You know, really apologetics um, goes all the way back to the early church. Uh, the New Testament, uh, as I mentioned, 1 Peter 3.15 and, and a number of other verses. Um, there's a verse in the little book of Jude, Jude <laughs> verse 3, that says that Christians are to earnestly contend for the faith or defend the faith. If you read in the book of Acts, Paul would, uh, it says in like Acts 9.17 that Paul was um, speaking, alleging, and proving that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior. So when we think of, of three things, present, explain, defend. Hmm. Sometimes we present the gospel, um, Christ died for our sins. Often we have to explain what that means, that you know, God loves us, we're sinners, but we're valuable to God. Christ came from heaven, lived a sinless life, rose from the grave. But more and more in, in our culture, especially over the last couple of decades, we find ourselves, um, as a church, we no longer have home court advantage. Hmm. You know, th th there was a day when America was so thoroughly predisposed to Christianity right. that, you know, if you talk about uh, Moses and Abraham sacrificed Isaac and King David and uh, Palm Sunday and the Gospels, I mean, people understood, but more and more uh, increasingly, people don't, they're, they're unfamiliar with these terms. Uh, and so we've got to present, we've got to explain, and more and more we have to defend. Hmm. There's also the rise of atheism that we've seen in the last really five to ten years. And now, uh, it's interesting, after a couple of hundred years of roughly atheism hovered around four to five percent, throughout 200 years of American life, uh, at any given moment, maybe 95, 96 percent did believe in God, four to five percent did not. Hmm. Studies show that among millennials, now millennials are people under 30, mm -hmm. uh, atheism might be as high as 20 percent. Wow. One out of five, uh, and there, there have been articles called The Rise of the Nuns, N-O-N-E-S. Yeah, yeah. When you say, you know, what religion are you? What God do you believe in? And many um, millennials will say none. Hmm. And thus the need um, to uh, rise to the challenge and be able to explain and even defend the faith. Sure. And so you've authored a few of your uh, most recent books address kind of that, 10 Answers for Atheism, yeah. um, 10 uh, issues that divide Christians. 
are, are we not supposed to just belligerently throw the word at them, or is it strategic? How does that work when you're talking about atheism? Great question. You, you know, it's been my privilege to interview, just like you and I are talking, a lot of atheists and um, of people of other religions. When I've written um, 16 books, I, I give God the glory, and one of the things that I've tried to do in the books is really get uh, the, the straight scoop from people and not, you know, caricature people's position. Sure. I, I sat down with Christopher Hitchens, one of the world's most famous atheists, twice, and I said, okay, um, dismantle Christianity for me. Tell me why you don't think it's true. And um, David Silverman, president of American Atheists, and uh, Michael Shermer, who's a well-known atheist on the West Coast, and a number of others. And uh, I've interviewed uh, Muslims, and I've interviewed Imams, and I've interviewed a lot of different people. And uh, one of the things that I found, regardless of the person, is that people want to um, have relationship and not be preached at, sure. but they want dialogue. Yeah. And, and 1 Peter 3.15 that I alluded to says, um, be ready always to give an answer to everyone who asks a reason, dot, dot, dot. Do this with gentleness and respect. Hmm. Um, let me tell you what apologetics is not. Apologetics is not a right to be abrasive hmm. or to be um, condescending or anything like that. Um, do we have evidence for God? Absolutely. I would say philosophically, scientifically, historically, archaeologically, uh, experientially, psychology, by many vantage points, we can defend the reality of Christianity. So the evidence is on our side, overwhelmingly so. But at the same time, um, people aren't forced to Jesus. They're drawn. Mm, yeah. And, and um, it's been my privilege as an evangelist, because that's really what my heartbeat is. I mean, uh, the Lord's allowed me to do a lot of things, but I, at my heart, I'm an evangelist. Um, the, the person who appears to be farthest from the gospel, um, you, you can share with them when there's trust, honesty, and respect. Mm. So I would say to the Christians listening, and maybe you're concerned about you know, the people that are vehemently opposed to God and Christianity, just understand that person, the, the more vociferously they oppose the gospel, chances are they've been hurt or they've got some, maybe somebody they loved um, was diagnosed with a terminal illness and they're angry with God or something like that. Mm -hmm. So to draw them along and to really have uh, the right to be heard You've got to cultivate trust. You've got to cu cultivate respect. Hmm. And, and that takes time. Yeah. That ta we need good data, but we need uh, a good relationship for that data to, to transfer over. Absolutely. Well, we are running a little low on time, but I want to dive in to the one topic that our viewers here on WTLW will get a chance to see from your Monday night um, talk, which really defended the Word of God and, and explained uh, how to validate both the Old and New Testament and how to be sure that we can trust the Word. And so let's dive into that just briefly. Sure. Um, well, you know, one of the big questions, is the Bible true? And so um, I did kind of an abbreviated talk. By the way, the, the talk that we did on the Bible under attack, the mm -hmm. assault against the Bible and the facts that verify Scripture's divine origin. That's a semester-long class at a college. But. <laughs> and you consolidated it down yeah. to, to over an hour, a little over an hour. Yeah, basically the manuscripts that give us the Bible, Old and New Testament, uh, we believe there's great evidence that they've been preserved mm -hmm. and that they um, are of divine origin and that they can be understood. You know, three questions we need to ask about the Bible. It, has it been preserved? Is it of divine origin? And then can we understand its meaning? Hmm. And we talked a little bit about uh, the text, the preservation of the text. We talked a little bit about archaeology and we talked about the testimony of Christ. And, um, you know, one of the interesting things, I'll, I'll tell you this quickly, um, the Bible ha seems to exhibit a lot of supernatural characteristics, mm -hmm. not the least of which is the ability to fulfill prophecy, mm -hmm. um, but also the ability to change lives. I mean, think about a book that makes honest people out of dishonest people, that makes virtuous people out of, um, you know, promiscuous people, yeah. formerly promiscuous, that makes um, selfless people out of 
formerly selfish. Uh, there's a story told of Billy Graham, and he's in London, and he's preaching, and, you know, the choir sings, come forward, be saved, you know, and somebody is up in the stands and says, um, hey, I want to go down there and pray. The other guy goes, yeah, me too. Uh, let's go together. And then one guy says, hey, before we go down there and pray and do business with God, um, I'm a pickpocket, and uh, here's your wallet back. <laughs> uh, you know, what message uh -huh. can sufficiently change a life sure. like the Word of God? Absolutely. So the Bible seems to exhibit a lot of characteristics that make it unique, hmm. and it tells us the story of Jesus. Uh, wonderful. Well, Alex, again, we're thrilled to have you. For all of our viewers that maybe want to keep up with you or to know where you may be, um, or just how to pray for you. How can we do that? Well, thank you very much. Yep, my website is simply my name, alexmcfarland.com, mm. M-C-F-A-R-L-A-N-D, alexmcfarland.com. And uh, I would ask people to pray for us. We are looking at uh, maybe in uh, 2015 bringing uh, an event or two to the Van Wert area. Uh, we do a tour for teenagers called the Stand Strong Tour, and uh, we would very much love to see uh, a chance to talk to the teenagers of Van Wert mm. about the Christian worldview. Well, I know that we would be excited to have you back. And so again, thank you for being on with us today. Well, thank you for the great work you're doing, Zach. God bless you. God bless you. We want to thank Trinity Evangelical Friends as well for having Alex to our area. And so you can watch that coming up on WTOW. Keep a lookout for Alex McFarland's talk. All right, Dandy, take it away.